That's us now. Um, great, thank you. Um, colleagues, you're very welcome to join us uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Mary Thompson. I'm joined on the call uh, with colleagues Mark Irwin and Lynn Yenica from Education Scotland. This is the last of, of this session's um, focus webinars on outdoor learning. And it's a really lovely one to, to kick off with um, for the month of June. And it's a focus on early level. Um, we're really, really delighted uh, that you've come along and you've joined us this evening at the end of a busy day um, and at the end of a, of a, of a year in uh, working through various challenges. So we're delighted to be joined by colleagues from East Ayrshire and from Thrive. We have um, Gwyneth Quinn, who is um, one of the who's going to be speaking first um, and taking through how, talking through how she's developed early level practice, particularly with outdoors within East Ayrshire Council. And um, Gwyneth and colleagues will be delighted to share their practice from your Kirk from Logan and from Patna and people will be on the call maybe to kind of answer some questions and to explore that thinking with you a little bit further and that's been built into the time this evening. And then we'll pass on to Deborah from Thrive Outdoors who will be sharing a little bit more about the opportunities and the support and all, all the help that's available to you thinking around outdoor learning and particularly at early level. So you'll not hear from me for the moment. I'll just turn off my screen um, and it'd be great if my colleagues, Mark and Lynn, can just confirm that the presentation is working okay as we begin. Um, so I'm delighted without any further ado to hand over to Gwyneth and we're delighted that you're here to, to share with us this afternoon, Gwyneth. So thank you. Thanks, Mary. I'll just introduce myself. Ah, there's the slides coming up already. So my name's Gwyneth Quinn and I'm the Principal Teacher of Early Years in East Ayrshire Council. And I'm really delighted to have the opportunity to share with you our work on developing outdoor learning across the early level with a real focus on continuity for children from their early learning and childcare experience into primary one and beyond. So I work for the Early Years Service as a line manager of a team of Early Years teachers who work across the authority. And my remit also includes um, the development of early level pedagogy. Two of my colleagues are here with me this afternoon to share their work and we'll be happy to do our best to answer questions as we go along through the chat. So on to the next slide. And um, we've got a quick outline of the content of our presentation. So we really want to give you a flavour of what's happening in these schools and a sense of what that means for the children. So we've got a couple of short videos to show you. And you'll also hear from Denise McCall, the head teacher at Logan Primary, on their unique approach to continuity in outdoor play and learning. So in the next slide. The context and background is really important. Um, it's provided the conditions, the fertile ground, I suppose, for our approach to develop. So developing outdoor play and learning has been and is still a very significant priority within early learning and childcare. We've invested in new outdoor areas that are more similar to wild natural areas and they include things like, um, you can see in the photos, a variety of surfaces, and the aim of these is to facilitate greater opportunities for children to explore and take risks. We've also invested in really good quality outdoor clothing for all our practitioners and teachers. And you'll see, um, you'll see this in the video that we're going to show. So on to the next slide. We've put significant effort as well into training in outdoor play and learning for our early learning and childcare staff. And in February 2019, we ran an experiential in-service for all of the settings. This has really helped to increase staff motivation and develop that have-a-go attitude. And you can see in this slide, Rachel Cooper, the, the programme manager of Thrive Outdoors, um, our co-presenting organisation this afternoon, delivering the keynote speech and a practical workshop. So the next slide shows some more of our practical workshops. Uh, there's one there working with fires, uh, experiencing a bit of risk or adventure, and you can see practitioners using tools there as well. So most of these workshops were provided by the Learning Outdoors support team in East Ayrshire Council, but we're also trying to use the skills and experience of our own practitioners. And we had one workshop 
uh, that was run by one of our funded provider settings. So the role of the Learning Outdoor Support Team is really significant in terms of the work across our authority. And it really underlines the commitment um, in East Ayrshire to grow in outdoor learning at all levels. So the following slides that you're going to see show an example of how we're working with parents. Um, the increase in outdoor play and learning across the early years has meant that we've really had to think about communicating with parents and carers about it. Not all parents have embraced it. So particularly obviously with COVID and increased outdoor play and learning, many parents have really welcomed it, but not all of them. So one way that we've addressed this is by creating this booklet about outdoor play and learning. And it really outlines some of the key messages to help parents and carers understand why it's important. Um, so I think there might be another couple of slides there of that. We just wanted to make sure that we were giving, you know, photographs and examples to, to show um, how exciting and fun it is for children as well. So if we move on to the next slide, that's just giving you a wee flavor of that leaflet. It's more like a booklet because it's got quite a few pages. Um, the next slide shows one of the network meetings for, this is for early years staff. So these have a really strong practical element and they aim to be a forum for sharing skills and experiences and practitioners and teachers having a go. So all of the, the work that I've really been talking about so far is all early years development. But what we've done is we have since transformed the network into an early level network. So it's not simply open to um, early years staff um, and on the next slide you can see another picture another sorry some more text so this really explains what i was just outlining there that we decided to change it and rather than it being simply for early years staff to include all early level staff so we have teachers as well so um, a key issue is the amount of time children spend outdoors. They might be outdoors every day in, in, in early years settings. So what happens when they move to primary one? And in terms of transitions, if there's not a lot of outdoor learning, it's a massive and possibly really difficult change for children. So we view this network as one way to do something about developing greater continuity across early level. And at the moment, you can see here a couple of slides from our network meeting. So it currently takes place online and includes contributions from different settings, early learning and childcare and primary settings. And on this slide, you can see a wee bit from the last meeting. So the picture at the bottom there um, is shows some of the work that they've been doing at Darville around local vis visits to local woodland. So on the next slide, you can see a couple more examples of themes. And we really are driven by the participants' suggestions. So the, the examples here show that we've used woodwork and also learning for sustainability as key themes that practitioners and teachers have asked us to um, provide some more input on. So um, that's, I think that's the end of the slides now. So what we want to do now is to show you a short video and this illustrates the work at Muir Kirk uh, Early Childhood Centre and Primary School. And after the video, Karen Gale, the Primary One teacher is on this call and she'll be here to answer any questions about you might have about the work there. Outdoor learning in the school grounds and in the wilder areas nearby is embedded in practice across the early level at Muirkirk Early Childhood Centre and Primary School.
die Schafe an die Krone und zeigt. Befüllen der Kronmark! What do you think has really helped develop your approach at Muirkirk? Our ECC has the, the real luxury of having a wonderful outdoor area for the children to access every single day. And the children in primary one have had this outdoor experience, so developing it further when they came into primary one seemed like a natural journey to actually take. Um, the, the children thrive in the outdoors. They absolutely love being out there, no matter the weather. So I think their love of the outdoors has started early and it's developed as they've come in to primary one. So the class teachers have gone with it. With um, primary one teacher, Mrs Gale, and the early years practitioner, um, Claire, we work closely together in sharing collaboration with the Ford book. We look at the experiences we're going to deliver to the children and what experiences they're going to deliver in primary one and can they mix it up and share the learning um, for the transition side of it um, we're going to swap the flood books so what we do at the woods the primary one classroom will get to see it and what they do in the primary one classroom it will come through here and we're going to put wee comments into the book so what we did was we would watch the provocation video daily and then we would get the children's ideas about how to take that forward. So it was planning in the moment rather than pre-planning. And then we recorded this in a floor book. It was a great way for the children to transition from the ECC into primary one. So it gave them the chance to sort of relax into school. And it was more about what they wanted to do and how to take their learning forward. Also the benefits of going outside um, meant that the kids felt a bit freer and it, they just it made them a bit more confident as well. They obviously have unlimited access to outdoors in the ECC. Are there, are there other ways that you approach continuity? The ECC have a lovely sort of garden area with a sand pit and water, water facilities um, in different areas they can use and we decided to go and have a look at what they had and try to put some of that into our garden. When we take them outside, they have that freedom. Um, you can almost see the weight being lifted off their shoulders. I think it has a real calming effect on the children as well. Because we've got the outdoor clothing, because we keep Wellingtons and different things here, it means we can go out in any weather. So if there's nobody able to go out because it's a wet break, but we feel they really need that opportunity to go out, they can go out and they can put their wet weather gear on and we can just have fun in the garden. I also feel that because the children take the lead when we go outdoors and they tend to kind of decide what they want to do or how to take that forward, um, they are very successful learners. They became responsible citizens because we leave the plantation exactly as we find it and we always talk about that. Um, and obviously they're effective contributors because they're contributing to the environment. So have you noticed the difference in any of the individual children since coming out to the woods? There's one little boy in particular who used to not want to come out at all and was more dead timid and cold and always want to go back to the setting but um, he's progressed so well, totally really enjoying his experience. So his confidence has just grown and grown every time and you see that with a lot of kids. So they sometimes drop their guard. Um, they become more chatty, they're more confident outside, they're more practical learners. Um, so yeah, it's just good to see them, you know, take the lead and show us things and um, I think a, a bit of confidence. What difference does it make working outside as a practitioner? Well, it's so much more fun outside, isn't it? I mean, look at this, we're able to have snack on little logs and drink and have fun and it's just so much different than being inside, it's great. And do you notice a difference for your own well-being and coming outside? Yes, I think it's definitely improved my well-being, I love being outside, it improves your mood. It makes us as a team, I think, stronger as well, doesn't it? But yeah, I love coming out here, it's great. So what advice would you give to other schools who were wanting to develop their outdoor learning at, at the early level? It did start off, you know, maybe a wee hour here and there in the week, but building up confidence and realising you, know, you don't need to be ridiculously planned. You can take what you would be doing in the classroom 
but doing it in the outdoor environment, looking at all the resources in the outdoors and go at the speed of your staff. If they don't feel comfortable, then you're going to come up against the boundary straight away. And it's about supporting your staff and giving staff time to develop their skills and to try things, you know, and if it doesn't work, well, fine, it doesn't work. Um, you try something different the next time. Previously, um, we would quite often shy away. Oh, it's raining today, so we'll not go outdoors. Whereas I think now, um, staff are seeing the benefits of, right, okay, it's raining. Let's get the wetsuits on, the welly boots on, and let's go. My primary one teachers are taking some advice from the ECC. So there's good sharing of practice across the ECC into primary one as well. So my, my advice is just, you know, jump in there, give it a go, small steps, and go really at the pace of the staff. It's on the wow! wow. Thanks for sharing that, Mary. That worked really well. That was good. So we would really love to hear from any of you. Um, if any of you have got any questions or comments that you might like to ask Karen, the class teacher who's on this call, and I'm sure would be really delighted to answer any questions. Um, while we're waiting for maybe people thinking about some of the questions, Gwyneth, um, there was one thing that really, that was fantastic and it's so inspiring. I love to see stuff like that. It was actually a really important message, I think, in there, which is quite practical. It's go at your staff's pace. I think that's really important, actually, because for many of us, being outdoors it feels quite natural and we're used to it, but actually just really reflecting let's make sure our staff are comfortable. Um, initially, anyway, that way we can move to making people feel a wee bit more uncomfortable outdoors. That's where you get a lot of thrill, et cetera. But, um, but I really like to hear that, because I do think that's really important. Sometimes, I guess, years and years ago, in my background, perhaps um, encouraging people to maybe be make a huge step from where they are. And actually, that that was quite problematic. I felt so. Small steps at your staff's pace is just it's great to hear. Good point, Mark. I see a questions come through yep. there on the chat. Can you see the chat, Karen, or would you like? Will I read that out for you? Are you happy to come in and answer that? Yeah, um, I can see it, Gwyneth. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Good. Very good, Karen. Um, we in the early childhood centre they go out every day um in primary one classroom we have a designated time on a thursday morning where we go out every week so that's their designated outdoor time so hail rain or shine we go out at that time and um, so the children come dressed appropriately the parents know the routine the children know the routine however because we now have our little garden area we actually go outside every day so um, we take the learning out to the garden and then we talk about the out-out. So some days it's just into the garden and then other days it's beyond the school grounds. So we go up to the plantation or we go a walk to a certain area and we take our snack classes and we have a picnic or whatever that might be. Um, sometimes it's standalone, um, depending on what the children want to do. So when we did the virtual nature school, it was sort of standalone experiences that we did through the virtual nature school. So we would watch the provocation video and then carry out the activities that the children had decided they wanted to do. Other times it is embedded within the literacy and numeracy. This year we've had a massive focus on literacy, more than numeracy, I would say. Um, and we sort of tend to do it through storybooks. So when we did the Scottish Book Trust Awards, um, the book, bags that the children got had the different books in them and because I have a one-two we looked at both sets of books and some of them were about trees and some of them were about birds so we go out with our binoculars we would go bird watching and we went out and did back rubbings counting trees and um, climbing trees all that kind of thing and 
our hope this year, well, for next session, is to um, do more numeracy outdoors and take that outdoor because we feel we, we've We've managed to embed the literacy. We're doing my phonics outdoors, as you saw in the video. The children were doing their phonics there. There was a message from the tiger. So we got up there, the book was there, we read the book, and then there was a message from the tiger that they had to phonetically sound out and read. And then we got to our special tree and there was tigers that they had to go and find. Um, and we talked about that. And then when we came back to school, they wanted to find out more about tigers, what the tigers eat, where do they live? Um, because the children were quite concerned that there was a tiger at the plantation so they didn't really want to go back because they'd found Cormax but then we then discovered that actually um, tigers don't live in this country so we're quite safe um, so yeah we tried to sort of just um, either do standalone or embedded it just depends we go by the children's wants and needs um, the next question I think was about green space the local green space um, we actually are really lucky in Muirkip because we have a lot of countryside round about us and there is um, what's called the Kirk Plantation, which is like a, a wooded area that we actually can go to. And the Early Childhood Centre tend to access a little wooded area that's slightly closer to the school. And that's why they take the logs and things up because it's just a two minute walk from the school and um, just literally up on the path. Whereas um, in the primary school, we tend to go a little bit further um, and there's lots of different areas that we can access. We have a risk assessment that covers the local area and obviously local area permission. So we don't need to get permission every time we go. It's the same, it's the same format um, that we use. Um, and I don't know. Karen, there's a wee comment there just about they love the idea of using floor books from the early learning childcare um, with primary staff to support that transition and that um, continuity of experience. So that's a really nice um, point that somebody's picking up. I have a wee quick question from Naomi um, coming in about uh, logistics, really about clothing. Any idea where you can point in the direction of the of the puddle suits and how did you go mm -hmm. about your adult clothing? So the early childhood centre got their puddle suits from the lost team, I think. I think they had applied for funding and they got through that. In primary one, we actually encouraged the children to bring in their own wet weather stuff. Um, but we did manage to get a grant to buy some spare wellingtons and some spare outdoor clothing suits that we can keep. Um, we have changing rooms in our school and um, when we got our new school built they built in changing rooms and what we've actually done is we don't use them to get changed for PE because of the COVID restrictions because the children obviously can't get changed so what we've done is turned one of them into a wet weather um, sort of area so the clothing the wet weather clothing is hung up in there and it sort of dries and we have a wellington rack under our stairs that we just pull in and out for the kids to keep their wellingtons um, and the parents the parents were used to doing that in the nursery so it wasn't a big change for them when they came into primary one they were used to having to keep wet weather gear at the early childhood centre anyway so it was just a natural progression to have it um in the school but yeah, we, we definitely do apply for as many grants and things as we possibly can. Um, Muirkirk's an area of high deprivation, so our parents can't always provide the clothing and things we need. So I would definitely recommend just apply for as many grants as you possibly can and see what you can get. As for the adult clothing, we were very lucky because um, I contacted Gwyneth and I'm not outdoorsy at all. So this was a real culture shock for me and I found this really difficult. Um, and I don't think I'd ever owned a pair of Wellingtons in my life until I started doing this. Um, so we contacted Gwyneth because we knew that the early childhood centre staff had big waterproof jackets with fleeces in them. And I said to Gwyneth, is there any chance that I possibly could get one for myself and my early years practitioner? And the lost team provided us with our jackets. So we were really lucky there that we managed to get that. Um, Mark here. Um, there are some other questions there, but actually I'm interested in the fact you said you're not an outdoor person. Have you changed? Have you, has your outlook changed through this, this experience? Yes, definitely. Um, I have never really been outdoorsy. As a child, I wasn't very outdoorsy either. Um, and the thought of muck and rain and wet and cold just did not appeal to me at all. But I can see so many benefits from it. The children love it. The, the kids that maybe struggle in class with their social emotional issues, I see how they come out of their shell, how, you know, 
as I said in the video, the weight lifts off them, they feel much fear. And I kind of feel that as well as an adult. Some days it's just great to get out from the four walls of your classroom and just have that sort of breathing space. And I think sometimes, um, especially during COVID as well, we were all stuck in the house. And like for my family, it was just our daily walk was the thing that kept us all sane, I think. Yep. And I, I just see that with the children, it, it just makes a real difference. And us as a staff as well, we, we now say, oh, can't wait to Thursday to give a get our walk or go up to the plantation or whatever. Um, yeah, and I've seen a real difference in the staff as well. And it really does lift your mood. Like you get into the end of the week with a Thursday, you're a bit tired, but you know you're going outdoors on the Thursday morning and it just kind of gives us that boost um, just to get us through the last two days before we get to the weekend. So, yeah, I really have changed my outlook. That's oh, wonderful. Oh. Yeah, Karen. Sorry, a bit of delay there. Um, just uh, there's uh, maybe we'll just take one last question before we move on. Then, so actually, Lauren's asking, what does standalone and embedded learning actually mean in this context? Is it is it child led or adult led or is it embedded um, within literacy and numeracy? I guess. Okay, um, we tend to be very child-led in the primary one and we have a very child-led approach. But as you probably saw in the video, the children um, were using a book in the Tiger in My Garden. So the children had already been interested in tigers because we did a little provocation with the tiger who came to tea for our writing. So they came in one day and there was a tea set and there was Sophie and the tiger and we had cakes and the book was there and we read the book and whatever. So we decided to take that outdoors with us. So that was, the children had shown an interest in the tigers, they were interested in that. And so therefore the staff then decided that they found this book about the tiger in the garden. It worked really well um, with what we were doing. So we had went up and set that up and then we had the sort of message from the tiger that so, that day their phonics activity was reading the message from the tiger so instead of doing a standalone phonics lesson in the classroom we took it outdoors and we did it outside so therefore we're sort of embedding the learning because the phonics is part of our outdoor learning it's also part of the literacy work it's part of their writing project so it all ties together but the children then take it their own way so they wanted to find out more about tigers that wasn't something that we particularly planned to do but that's what they wanted to do so then we then use the ICT and things like that so they can find out more information. Um, some of the children wanted to write about different, we, when the tiger came to tea, we wrote about different animals coming for tea. They wanted to write about different animals in their garden. So they take that learning forward. They decided, right, well, there was a tiger in the story, but I want it to be, I want to be an ostrich that come, that, that's in my garden. So they then write their own little stories based on that. So um Sometimes it is adult led, so it's like sometimes it'll be something that I've kind of initially set up and I want to do, but it then very quickly comes away from being what I wanted it to do and much more about what they wanted to do. And I find that that's always better. They always have better ideas than me. Just slightly like thank you, Karen. That, that's been fantastic. Um, real great input and quite inspiring as well. So thank you very much. Any other questions at the moment? No, um, we may have a problem there with some. Deborah's just left the meeting. <laughs> She's been having problems with her um, and some that. So, oh dear. Right. Um, so, again, thank you very much, Karen. And um, Gwyneth, should we start move on to Logan? Yeah. Um, so, there's a couple of slides here about Logan. Um, but I think probably the best thing to do is to pass over to Denise McCall, the head teacher here, and she can. Um, tell you a wee bit about what outdoor learning looks like there across the early level. Yeah, I'm here. I've just put my camera on. I hope you can see me. Um, really great stuff there from New Kirk. So that was lovely to see them. And a wee bit like, like New Kirk, we're using that play pedagogy, and particularly in out year, out, outside learning, to transition, to support that transition from the early years uh, or, or early level from both the ECC and into primary one, and really trying to match that in terms of the environment, which I think we recognise as that extra practitioner that we have, that outdoor environment, and also in terms of that play pedagogy. So we've been working uh, when we, you know, in the ECC where they do have that free flow and they can come in and out. Uh, and this is, I think, this is the ECC, and we're very lucky to have a, a newly built uh, outdoor 
area uh, for them. But we've also tried to match that with our P1 area. So they have a, desig a, a wee bit like the P1 garden. They've got a designated area. And the same as Muircourt, we have got the clothing. And they would be out uh, every day. At least as, as we move, as they transition over, it starts off that out every day and they're embedded in that as, as the play page got got you. So they're working in muddy kitchens, uh, loose parts. We have an early years practitioner that works alongside them. So that's very much the kind of underpinning of it. Is that play pedagogy building into the curriculum? And, and anybody that knows Logan knows that we've uh, worked really hard on really creating a curriculum that's based around learning for sustainability so that kind of underpins what we're looking at within that as well we have got a uh, horticulture and animal husbandry which big, play a big part in both curriculum in early years and right through um in the for the wee ones and i'm sure that is ariana with a worm um bugs are just the 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 highlight of early years um i went into the nursery the other day and it was like wildlife on one they had a beetle and a spider in a tub that were fighting and it was what they were going to do and how they were going to rescue them that then goes on and, and we're able we're really fortunate in logan to be able to to build on that love of nature. And it is a real engagement, a real hands-on engagement with wormeries and bird hotels. And then when we take it into the primary, we start our, 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 our development of that and we actually have beekeeping. Obviously, our P1s aren't involved hands-on with beekeeping, but they're in and around the apiary. They know the apiary's there. And they're able to watch live uh, broadcasts of inspections, uh, hive inspections, not, not school inspections. I don't imagine anybody would want to watch those, but hive inspections and they, they get to see that. We've also had, um, and I think a lot of people have done the hatching trick, chickens in school where they have the eggs and they hatch them. Um, we had we did it slightly differently where we just put eggs in, they made a nest for them. The kids in the nursery they had hot water bottles, they were putting all these things. I then took those away, eggs away over the weekend and brought in some chicks uh, of my own and they were able to raise those chicks chicks for a wee while. Those chickens then transitioned with the children and they became the school chickens. So the chickens that were hatched in the nursery then became part of that husbandry programme where all children have access to developing skills around husbandry right through uh, through the, 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 prim the primary school. So again, not just being transitioning to early level, but then developing those skills into, sec uh, into first and second level. And eventually with the beekeeping, we're even looking at being able to offer the Nat 5 and basic bee keeping so that that's the way it's moving through we also have the the benefit of having a learning for sustainability teacher that we've employed through PEF funding and that has helped to build the confidence of our teachers a wee bit like the loss team Arthur has worked alongside loss has, has been part of that training he's supporting the early years practitioners he's supporting the class teachers to to build in in that um those skills and give them confidence in, in doing that and again he's also there to help with planting to help with some of the the more practical side of it and um, that that our kids our kids really love again in terms of planning and our development making sure that those opportunities run across so we were involved with the rspcb a uh, big bird spot the big garden and that was again a, a project that was run from ecc into into the primary and then uh, some of the kind of heritage hero stuff, uh, the John Muir Awards, working with families as well, taking that forward. So really trying to share in that development, sharing pedagogy. And I think the richness uh, for us is that actually the primary and further up the primary uh, into that first and second level are seeing the benefits of this, are seeing how play pedagogy can underpin. And then we, we take learning outside, actually the children are, are, are more able to lead learning sometimes than the, the teachers are there and really those natural experiences that come through and it gives almost teachers that confidence that we see in their early years practitioners are taking that wee step back and add actually learning, letting children lead learning. When we move it outdoors, it almost gives the teachers that empowerment to, to take the, the step back and to build on their learning. We're really lucky. We've got a huge uh, footprint of a school, and I, and I know a wee bit like Newark Park, we're in a rural area. We've been involved with rewilding, so we have trees and planting and all that within the boundaries, but also, again, taking it out into that local environment. I think the wee ones were away today putting a bug hotel or bug traps, I think it was, away up in the woods somewhere. Um, so 
I suppose it's having the confidence in the pedagogy that it works and it has the impact. I think it's giving you, empowering your practitioners. You know, we talk about teacher agency, giving them that that freedom to to do that. I think the tools that they have, like floor books, taking those into primary, pinning it the the play pod pedagogy down for them, also gives them the confidence that they are the the. They're not setting, they're not leading learning, but they're still they're still facilitating, they're still curating learning and, and supporting that. So it certainly had a huge impact for us. It's certainly something that underpins our curriculum now from early level right through to second and even into third. And as I say, looking at that NAT5 uh, into, into the beekeeping that we should be able to offer by the end of P7, if not just into that first uh, first year. So absolutely would mirror what Anne from yours Kirk was saying. It's about having the confidence, the inf all the information is there, the why of it's there. And I know I, I've spoken before about why are we doing this? We're doing it because it's an effective tool for learning. They've got an entitlement to it in, ter in terms of learning for sustainability. But I think once practitioners actually see where this can lead, I think it's so empowering for them. It's making the children and that that classroom team really in charge of their own learning. Thank you, Denise. And that slide there shows just a wee bit, a wee bit more and it's got your primary one children on it there. I was just having a look at the time there, Mary, and noticed that we're, we've are we kind of gone over our, our allotted time and just wondering um, if, if what your thoughts are, or, or yours, Mark, are about that, whether we should hand over to Deborah just now. <laughs> no, I think, I think um, it, obviously, partner are, are prepared. We've got a, a short video to share from them. I think actually we would want to continue with that. Um, as it turns out, Deborah has dropped off the call, so we may we maybe have time on our side anyway. So if you're okay, um, I, I would really like to um, to share partner partner's journey. Yeah, no, that would be great. Thank you. So yeah, the next video that you're that we're going to show you is a really short little video, and this exemplifies the work that's gone on at Patna in the Primary One class, and um, developing outdoor play and learning. And again, here there's a strong focus on play pedagogy and children leading their learning outside and inside. And just again, if my colleagues could let me know if the sound comes through, okay, that'd be much appreciated. Yeah, no problem, Mary. Yeah, I think it's, it's unfortunate, Deborah. It looks as if she's been thrown off the call. She's had problems with her internet all day. So um, we've got a bit of time here, I think. Working fine, Mary.
thanks, Mary. Um, so, yeah, we would really love to hear from you now. Um, hope looks like we've got time. Uh, if Deborah's not available now, um, so yeah, we would like to hear what your thoughts are on the key themes in developing continuity and greater quality across early level. And we'd really love to hear examples from you as well. Um, maybe ideas you might have for how you could progress things in your own setting. And maybe as well about what stood out for you from the examples that we've shown. So, um, Perhaps you could type these into the chat, or if, if anybody would like to come in and raise their hand and, and speak, that would be lovely as well. Yeah, I think um, it's always great if we can hear some more voices. <laughs> Not just ours, eh, Gwyneth? Um, <laughs> so it's always lovely to hear what other people are doing and what really, I guess, what, as Gwyneth has said there, um, what really spoke to you, I guess, and what we've seen, because it's amazing what's happening in East Ayrshire, and I always love hearing about it. Um, chickens and bees. Of course, we all love chickens and bees. It's really inspiring. Just really like to thank Denise from Logan. I think a lot of the work going on in Logan Primary is just really, really inspiring, actually. Uh, and a Nat and 5 in apiary or beekeeping is quite exceptional. So is there any other? Sorry, Gwyneth. Sorry, I, I was just going to say there's Lauren saying there that she loved the hammock in the garden at Patna. I think one of the, the key things is that in each of these different schools, the journey has looked a wee bit different, you know, so it's, it's not, it's been about what the teacher's interests and skills are, what's available and you know, it's evolved in a different way in each place, which is really interesting. And I think it just kind of shows that there isn't a one size fits all approach. Um, Definitely. And I think it's a really important thing to consider. Something I try and encourage people to do when, I guess in particular, perhaps they're looking at their school grounds or their setting grounds, is don't look at, don't approach it as a deficit model, which is what do we not have? Approach mm -hmm. it with, what do we have and build on your assets that's a really key way of of working because it can be quite intimidating sometimes you think where do i start with this or is it going to be too expensive or you look at other schools and say they've got that we don't have that consider actually what you've got and consider your wider environment um, it was really lovely to hear about that local green space and and um, nature scott have got a really nice pyramid diagram about the idea of progression through space. So I was loving Karen talking about that daily experience. And for many of us, that will be the, the school or settings grounds. But then think about the local green space. It could potentially be weekly. Um, so for instance, my, my son who's seven, but his nursery, um, once a week, they would go to the local community garden. That was a really nice intergenerational aspect, but they would go there and plant in um, veg, vegetables and stuff, which they did in the nursery. But it was really nice actually going out wider to the community. So what we, any comments here? A lovely wee comment there uh, from Amelia saying, it's great to see the outdoor learning experiences are being given the same importance as indoor learning experiences. Hi, I'd like to share something. Hello. Hi, as I, I, in our nursery, I think um, I see it firsthand how the children learn on first experience. Example, when they planted the seeds, and then at the end, they harvested and they learn what harvest means. So making sense of the word, say, for example, harvest, the crops, vegetables, and just knowing, just seeing these um, plants growing and what's living things and what's non-living things. I think outdoor has got so much to offer for early years, and it's just amazing what they can learn. Um, also, when they're looking at like mini beast, we have a chart so they can take what they can find under the logs, under the rock. Um, it's just, yeah, the children just love the outdoor. And also, I think um, 
just seeing that that um, making sense of things and also like um, we put on today we have the waterfall so it was outside and getting new vocabulary from them and also when they're trying to draw something what the spider looks like how many um how many legs a spider has so just so many things you can learn outdoor and i think that's really great thank you great that's lovely to hear um nice to that hear was great to hear enthusiasm again from another practitioner on the call and just the, the difference it makes for, for learners experience really really excited and encouraged to hear that um gwyneth we have i think another comment just come in there um and we've got maybe another further slide to share um, so Jay Harkins is saying, I love the idea of using outdoor learning and discovery as a transition tool from nursery to P1. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully you've been inspired by some of the, the suggestions from across the three settings uh, this evening to consider that in, in your own in your own practice, in your own setting. And I'm sure um, colleagues would be happy to, to chat further, should that be helpful. Gwen, will I move on to the next slide for you? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mary. So that was just the kind of wee bit of background about the, the key themes or practice that you share. So we've, we've looked at that one there. Um, and I see guys popped in a, a, a slide, but we'll maybe look at this. Um, Gwyneth, if you want to just maybe share some of this with us and we'll look at the, the questions in just a moment. Yeah, and I think actually what it says on this slide is probably linking into what Gary said there. So really what i feel and, and what we feel are the key things um in taking this forward are firstly the structures are important so we need to have our practitioners and teachers working together and um, that's why we have the early level network and um, we're we're working to develop greater continuity in terms of the early level pedagogy so uh, we want to have play indoors and outdoors as a real key driver for learning in the early level at a pace that suits the staff teams and um, the strong commitment to outdoor learning across all sectors is really a massive strength in our authority and the support of the learning outdoors team learning outdoor support team has been absolutely a key driver of that and the final point there i think is really important and has been mentioned by other people today as well is about you know empowering schools and teachers and individuals to develop approaches to suit them the resources strengths and go at a pace that suits them and i think going back to what Anne said uh, on the video you know she she was really passionate about that and i think that's what's made the difference you can see how karen is so enthusiastic about it and yeah it's just been really, really good, really effective. Great, thanks. Um, Gwyneth, I just see there's a wee question there. We'll maybe get to um, Elle Emily. There's a kind of a link to the Nature School Outdoor Learning Space progression, please. We'll, we'll be able to, one of the colleagues, hopefully we'll be able to locate that and pop that into the chat for you. Um, Lauren's asking a wee question. I think it's maybe the lost group, only a support for Ayrshire area. Um, that in Aberdeenshire and feel this would be really beneficial up there. Yes, the the lost team, <laughs> the sort team, the lost team is um, uh, an East Ayrshire initiative um, funded. So maybe you could lobby your council to <laughs> lobby your educational department to do that. But the lost team actually also have a website. So I think if if you Google that, you could you could find that and um, yeah. And as Denise says there in the chat. They put lots of material on Twitter and online as well. I think it's really about getting people talking as well, you know, and from the different sectors. And the, the Lost team are, are kind of a bridge um, for us, really, with that. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to pop the link in there to you, uh, Lauren, that'll be really helpful for you too. Um, I don't know that we've managed to get Deborah back on the call. I don't know if um, Lynn or, or Mark can confirm for me whether or not she's managed to make it back in. I don't think I've admitted her, but maybe if you could check that would be would be really helpful. No, I'm oh, sorry, I was just going to say that's that's a shame because they do have such a lot of really good resources available um, as well. So 
Um, no, she's not been able to to come on. I think what we'll probably do is actually we'll, we'll catch up with her and maybe actually record her session. Um, we can put that up on YouTube and then we'll email everyone so they can actually see what, what Deborah was talking about there. I've put a couple of links in there. Um, I can't actually, I'm not finding the pyramid yet. I've got it in a presentation that I might just actually share um, so you can see it. But I have put a couple of links in there um, with stuff from Nature Scott that I think is really useful. Um, one of them is the green space map. Um, so you can actually go into that and you can just put in I mean, your, your sentence postcode or wherever you are, if you're away, somewhere else yourself. Um, and it shows you um, green space locally. One of the filters I really like is five minute walk um, because that's really good for planning as well. Um, the other one then is actually some training, which is easy steps to learning in your local green space. So both of them are really, uh, I really recommend them for, for having a look. Um, and we are working quite closely with, with that group. I'm going to just quickly find that image. Uh, well, Mark, well, Mark's doing that. I've popped in um, to the, the chat pane there. Um, just three links. Um, Deborah was, we were going to watch some of um, the first video, which was the practitioner's view, why work in outdoor early, uh, ELC, which is a really fabulous uh, video. You can watch these again at your leisure at another time. Um, and again, they're just really, really helpful. And it was work that Thrive Outdoors did for, for Scottish government, thinking around um, ELC and um, approaches to outdoor learning as well to encourage as many people with that approach as we possibly can. Um, so as Mark said, we will connect again with Deborah, record that session just so that you've got the full kind of content and we'll share that link with you. It, it may not be immediately just depending on um, Deborah's availability, but we will do that uh, with you. It will also maybe share just a couple of little links if you haven't seen it already. Um, and a, my colleague Lynn may come in at this point just to share something that's happening next week. If you haven't seen it, um, that is the link for an outdoor learning weeklet, which has a whole host um, of resources that are available in um, websites and so on to support you with kind of early learning and childcare practice, but also in primary schools, outdoor, outdoor learning. And it's very much kind of pointing to partners, the work of partners, um, and if you're not aware of that. I saw a hand pop up there. I wonder um, if that person wants to kind of unmute and to, to come in and we'll find the lost um, a website for you as well. Did I see a wee hand pop up there? No, it's maybe pop down. Um, so Lynn, would you like to come in and to mention the the um, the session next week? Can you hear me, Mary? Because my mic wasn't working earlier. Yes, can you hear me, Lynn? <laughs> right, good. Um, yeah, Mary and I have been running a series of um, early years uh, webinars over the past couple of months, and our last one is actually next week. And we're looking at a whole lot of range of activities for kind of over the summer. And a lot of those will include um, outdoor learning as well. Um, so you're very welcome to come along and join those. You do have to sign up through Eventbrite. And Mary may have the link to hand um, that she can maybe put up for us. Um, but we'd, we'd welcome you coming along to that. Um, I was suggesting to Mary that maybe if we can't get Deborah before, maybe she might like to pop along to that one as well. But I can't promise that because we don't know yet um but we yeah we're, we've got a whole list of things we've been looking at that this week about what we're going to do and we're also talking about um what we might do after the holidays for early years as well so you're very welcome to come along and add your tuppence worth as it were mark we can see that on the screen that's grand oh it's just moved on I realised I had to unmute <laughs> before then I could show it. So um, I ignore that. Is that sorry about this? Um, so I guess this was something that, as I said, um, Nature Scott working with different settings and different schools. So this idea of, I guess, a progression. So the daily child-led play exploration. Interestingly, here you can see things like home garden, yards, local. Um, so moving up from that daily, thinking about weekly, thinking about that wider 
green space if you like and that could be um woodlands it could be forests and things it could be parks um and then that potentially wider countryside and then yearly and obviously they're talking residential there and things really more for um, upper primary and secondary but again i think it's a really nice idea of, of thinking about progression um and space i suppose and one of the other things i quite like that they came up here with so the four contexts of learning um that is part of the curriculum refresh i like here when we're actually putting that progression of space over that so if we're thinking about planning what are some of the opportunities for personal achievement or thinking about ideal or ethos of life actually putting this on top of it and thinking about okay how do we do that within the school or settings grounds how do we do that wider in a local further afield and then i guess what they're talking about there is the global context so i just i'm quite keen on showing that because i do think there is something really good about that progression and again, going back to one of the first things we actually mentioned was about go at your own pace. So probably not just taking your first trip ever outdoors into the Kruger National Park in South Africa is basically what I'm saying there. So colleagues, that's us just at half past now. Um, apologies that uh, we have had uh, challenges with our IT this afternoon and we've unfortunately lost David. As we say, we will uh, reconnect with her and record that and um, hopefully post that link with you um, again. We, and we'll be able to share that, a PDF of, of the session um, with you beyond this evening. I'm going to pass over to Mark to, to pass on our, our thanks um, and I'll pop in a wee evaluation link while he does that. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mary. Yes, um, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming along today. Um, I hope you've really got a lot out of that. Um, Mary has put the evaluation thing in there. I'd be really appreciated if you could fill that in. But uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Gwyneth um, and Denise and Karen for fantastic um, presentation. Really, really inspiring. Um, and I do think even looking at the, the, the messages and you can really see that that people have thought it's really super um i'm really quite inspired by it so it's been wonderful we'd really thank you so much and i uh, never tire of hearing of the fantastic work of lost and in, in the usher so thank you very much and thank you to everyone again for coming along obviously my colleagues maria and lynn um it's been a really great year of outdoor learning webinars and believe it or not, that's the last one of this year, academic that is. We'll be back after the summer. Great, thanks. I'm just going to stop the recording now and um, hopefully Gwyneth um, and Karen may be able to hang about just for another couple of minutes. Um, I think Denise has had to dash off um, just to answer any kind of questions.